Hi, this is Carolyn, and I'm here with Aaron, and it is May 2022, which is National Tennis Month. And last week, we talked a little bit about how to get your friends to start playing, but this week, we're going to talk about how to sign up for social or competitive leagues. I know both Aaron and I love playing USTA competitive leagues. We love going to a match every week and um, playing with our friends, but not everyone can do that. So Aaron, besides USTA competitive leagues, where else can people play and how do they sign up? So there's a lot of different ways. Um, you could, uh, there's a lot of meetup groups that yes. people find tennis yes. through, right? Mm -hmm. That's a really big one. Um, we had Janie on a year or so ago and she, uh, eventually started playing USTA leagues and then becoming a coordinator, but she had like 1500 people at one point or something yes. on a meetup group. Mm -hmm. Remember that? And they yes. were meeting like, you know, every week or a couple times a week. So that's a huge one. And then what always happens in situations like that, you may start with the, you know, 200 meetup group friends and you always end up finding, you know, who your people are and who you want to form teams with and kind of whittle that down. But that's just a really good, I mean, you could do a meetup group about any subject. Um, so that's a really good way to find tennis in your area. Um, that's, that's a really big one. And then also in addition to meetup groups, you know, there's also social drinking leagues. So where you can just sign up and it's not competitive, it's more, you're just out there to drink and enjoy your times with friends. So you don't have to play competitive right. tennis every time you play. They've also got Right, groups. exactly. Yeah, USC also has a group for like under 30. So do you remember, I think it was Alicia that told us that from USTA that even though I think her mom's like a 5-0 player, she doesn't want to play with people that are really a lot older than her. So you can find like the league that fits your age group that maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable right. with. Right. Yeah, yeah. Actually talking to her, I think, think you and I both laughed because um, we – playing 18 and over and now 40 and over, yeah. we thought, I think we made like a little joke saying like, we don't want to play the ladies that are 55 and over because they're so good. They're so crafty. And Alicia was like, well, my mom doesn't want to play like an 18 year old, you know, either. So yes. it kind of like, we understood it. everyone's in the same boat, right? 18 year olds don't want to play 30 or 40 year olds. 30 year olds don't want to play 50 year olds. 50 year olds don't want to play 18 year olds. Like we all really want to play within our age group. So yes, yeah, there's right. a lot of, it doesn't even, it doesn't even have to be through USTA. It can be through your local CTA, which I know we talked about last week, contact your local community tennis association, your CTA, because there are programs all over the country. Um, our local area has an under 30 league. And like you said, the social, I guess they call them beer leagues, you know, wine leagues, whatever you want to call them. And I know a lot of people that, they love the, that. Those are their favorite leagues. They don't even right. want to play competitive tennis. They are literally there to hit a ball, to get a little exercise. And they're there for the drinks, the mimosas, the whatever the, you know, they're there for the social aspect. Yeah. And that is a really important part of tennis. Yes. And you do not have to play is. in a league. Yeah. In a league to play tennis every single week with your friends. You that's just, a, that's a great point. You know, yeah. Have, yeah. Yeah. You, you just have to get outside and say you're going to play tennis, even if you don't maybe end up playing tennis sometimes. <laughs> That's right. But if you do want to play on a competitive league, maybe you're someone that does want to play in a competitive league. USTA does have the option now where you can sign up without a team. We learned from Marilyn Sherman and I think Danny Broadstreet from USTA that now USTA has an option where you can just go online, sign up as an individual, and then the team can find you. Yes. And it goes the other way too. So that's a really good point. If I am new to an area or all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I haven't played for 20 years. I want to start playing. I want to find a group, but I don't know how to do that. Definitely look. USTA's website is super robust and has all that information on there, but you can sign up for a team at whatever level you're playing at. You can, you know, get your rating or if you know your rating, sign up for a team. And then there's a box that is like, I am looking for a team. What did I call it before? Like it was like tennis dating. dating. Yes. I thought that was so fun. Right. <laughs> I'm, I play I'm the looking for side. A team. I'm looking for the team. That's yeah. right. That's, I'm ready to party. <laughs> um, but it also goes for those of us that have captained in the past. If we want to start a team, but maybe we only have like, I remember 
I don't know, a little bit ago, we were talking about forming a team, but I think we only had like six on level or something. But I remembered that Marilyn and Danny had told us about that, you know, the the fact that an individual player can find a team. But as a captain, you could form a team on USTA's website and then you could leave your team. They called it open. Yeah. And then people could sign up on your team. Like you as a captain didn't necessarily have to go out and do all the legwork and find the people they could uh they could sign up and and basically pick your team you know pick your team that you're captaining yeah that's a great option so yeah and- it, it definitely it helps yeah it helps players and captains in that yeah. in that stamp in that sense and you can also sign up for tournaments too i mean if you don't have the time to sign up for a league where you want to play you know maybe you yeah. know you're going to travel a lot this year or you're not available but just certain weekends you can always find a tournament you can play in with friends yeah. There's actually two things that made me think when you said that, Carolyn, there's two different things. Number one, one of the things I learned a couple of weeks ago when we were in Atlanta with the USTA Southern um, folks was some people just play tournaments. And you and I remember we were sitting in a meeting and we kind of looked at each other like, oh, wow, not everybody plays just like we do. A lot of people just play tournaments yes. all over. Yes. You know, it could just be in their area or they could do a little bit of traveling for it, which I think is really cool because I had just never thought about that. But the other thing that USTA does is not only do they run a whole bunch of tournaments all over the country, um, they have a new thing called a flex league. Well, I don't know how new it is, but it's called, uh, it's USTA flex league. And I was just reading up about it because I had a friend interested in signing up for flex league, but I, she was asking me for advice, but I wasn't, didn't know a lot about it. Yeah. I've never heard of it before. uh, I've never heard of flex league. before. Yeah. So it's, It's kind of like what we talked about last week about getting your friends to start playing tennis and signing up for a tennis ladder. It's basically USTA's, um, I think, if I read it correctly, it's you can join a team and not have to show up every single week, you know, on the same day at the same time to be to be part of a team. You can be on a flex league team and you get to pick when you can play. So it sounds like you work it out with your opponents. Oh, okay. And that's why they call it a flex league as opposed to like what you and I do, which is like, let's say we're on a Saturday, you know, 1 p.m. team in the spring. And those are the days that our matches are. And we may or may not be, may or may not be in the lineup. Flex league sounds like you pick your day and time to play. So you could still play in a league and it can still be competitive, but it does not need to be at this like you know, if people travel for work or if they have right. other obligations, you know, on days, but they really want to be part of a team, which is really important to a lot of people, there is a flex league that they can sign up for. Oh, that's a great option. And then I and just remember all on, sorry, it's all on the USTA's website. Oh, okay. That's super really, easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a yep. great option. Um, And then I just thought about world team tennis. That's another league you can join and you can play. And it has a really interesting format and say that you're playing singles one day and you feel like you're getting tired and you want to be subbed out. You can be subbed out. So I I really like that about World Team Tennis. So there's all these different options to play. 